Hey, to here, Amazon and BSLer from beautiful San Diego. In today's episode, I have my very special guest from Southern California, only a couple of hours away from me, um, is Tiffany, um, who is an import and export sales expert that works at uh, Worldcraft Logistics who actually has a 70,000 square feet facility of their own. Um, in today's episode, we're gonna be discussing um, the huge topic of the trade war, you know, kind of the tariffs, how everything is going really, and just figuring out what the impact um, is on, on sellers, you know, future sellers, people that have been already selling. I know many people are freaking out about the topic, and a lot of people are even scared to go into Amazon or even scale their Amazon businesses because they are super scared about what is going on. So today we'll get uh, an overview of the topic and then um, Stephanie will help us with um, you know a few things. So if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Um, she's also tagged in the uh, in the post, so be sure that you guys add her, check out her and you know her um, her page. And if you guys have or need uh, a freight forwarder, be sure to uh, reach out to her. So Stephanie, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing excellent. We're really honored to have you on here on this channel. Um, a lot of people here, you know, are, um, I know that they're going to get a lot of value from today's episode and um, especially with someone with your expertise. So why don't you kind of take us back to when you got started really in a business? What is your background like? You know, what did you really start working? How did you really get into this, you know, occupation that you are in today? Okay. So I started here when I, well, four years ago, actually, and I think in 2016, 15. And right. it was just through a, through a friend, right? That's how I started in the business. And ever since um, I started here, I started doing exports. So that's what the company started doing, right? We ran on exporting. So we would do exporting to Vietnam. We would do cars, you know, food stuff, et cetera. Um, that was a trade. And then in 2016, um, ending of 2016, Amazon started becoming a big thing. So that's where we jumped into, right? Um, and yeah, I started to learn imports and then I started then doing import sales. And yeah, so pretty much what I wanna cover is a lot of people ask, what is a freight forwarder? What do they do, right? So Absolutely. pretty much a freight forwarder, it can be a company, a person, an organization that gets product from point A to point, to point B. Um, so this company will arrange, it's pretty, pretty much we're like a middleman. We're dealing right. with your supplier and we're dealing with the buyer, right? Seller and buyer. So that's what we do. We'll get product from mostly China, right? Into the U.S. And we right. cover everything from customs clearance to picking up a product in China, getting it into the U.S., paying for duties, et cetera, right? That's what we do. Um, and a lot of factors, right? It, they depend on like the trade terms. So if you're familiar with EXW, DDP, DDU, all those th those terms, they'll determine what right. a freight forwarder will be covering. So that's one of the you know main things I wanted to point out. What a freight forwarder does. Absolutely, definitely. So um, you know, and, and that's something that um, a lot of people are kind of scared of doing because a lot of freight forwarders that are out there nowadays are in China. Um, so it's right. awesome that you guys are actually in the U.S. in California. You guys are definitely local, um, and, and you know, um, as you know, that especially beginner sellers when they first start selling on Amazon, when they first come to selling on Amazon, the whole like the big thing that I personally have seen that is stopping people is the fact that they have to deal with China. Um, not the fact that they are racist or anything, but it's just like everything that goes on. You know, it is a, a you know a, a country that's you know, across the world, on the other side of the world. Uh, they're afraid that, you know, they might be scammed. They're afraid that a lot of things can happen. Right. And um, so they, that's why they they kind of like the fact that they can have a freight forwarder or even an inspection company that can be kind of the middleman. And instead of having just the supplier themselves ship the, the products over. Now, so when I first started selling on Amazon, I was thought to just have my um, you know, my uh, uh, suppliers ship the the products directly to Amazon. Now, why is it important to have a fry forwarder to be the middleman in the middle? Okay, so that brings us to how do you select the freight forwarder, right? Right. Suppliers do offer the transportation service because maybe they have their own freight forwarder in China, which is Absolutely. great. I mean, nothing against that. Right. But 
you want to work with a freight forwarder, I mean, depending on your needs, right? So communication, that's one of the most important things. Sometimes there's a language barrier. And right. what happens when you get lost in translation? You can pay for extra fees, right? Or cargo can get lost. Money can, you know, be lost as well. So it's important for you to select a good freight forwarder, um, you know, communication-wise. If they're based in the U.S., that's great, too, because if there's an issue, you don't have to wait 24 hours to contact, let's say, this person in the U.S. or so-and-so, right? right? Another, another thing is communicate well sorry detail attention to detail so a lot of um suppliers or freight forwarders in china they're not so detailed they just want to get to the point and they won't right. cover you know like let's say you're asking them a certain question they'll answer that certain question but they won't go the extra mile and you right. want a person that will go the extra mile for you because um it's pretty much like a freight forwarder will open new doors for you kind of thing right absolutely definitely definitely um, Keep Go going. Ahead. No, no, keep going. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, those are two key points. And then the third thing, which is the most important to me, is the license, right? You want to make right. sure you're working with a licensed freight forwarder. And for you to know this, what you can do is you can go to the fmc.gov website, type okay. in the company that you're working with, right? So you can go on it right now, fmc.gov, okay. type in World Craft Logistics, which is our company, and we'll pull up. So you can see our um, more details and everything. And if you're working with a company that doesn't have a bond, you can get in trouble because if your shipment gets lost, if it gets damaged, they can just wipe their hands and say goodbye, and that's the end of it for your shipment, right? right Whereas absolutely. if you're working with a licensed freight forwarder, we are at you know at part liable for transporting your goods, so we have to be the face, right? Absolutely. So that's one of the most important things. You want to work with licensed freight forwarders. Um, second is communication, and then of course attention to detail, right? Those absolutely. are some key points. That's incredible. That's awesome. Now, um, you know, and, and those are all amazing points. Now, tell me what is exactly the difference between air shipping and sea shipping? Would you like, do you guys rather do one or the other? Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I understand that. And from my experience that, um, you know, air shipping could be a lot more expensive. However, it's a lot quicker, right? So with your experience, what is kind of your intake on sea shipping and air shipping? Okay, so to us, there's three types of shippings, right? You mentioned two already. And right. the third one would be Air Express. Okay, so right. Air Express, that's when you're using a courier company like DHL, FedEx. You can even use your supplier to, to, get, the, to get the goods over, right? Um, when do you use Air Express and when do you use Air Freight or Sea Freight? Whenever you have, well, at least our, our I, I guess our, let's see, our border is anything that's under 250 kilos or less than 1.5 CBM, anything below that, you want to use air courier or DHL, FedEx, et cetera, courier shipping. Right. And now the difference between air shipping, air freight shipping, and ocean freight shipping, like you mentioned, is the transit time, right? Of course, right. air freight you can get the shipment as fast as uh, two or three days, all in all in transit, right? The shipment can be in China today and it can get here tomorrow. That's a one day air service. But the Absolutely. price is two times, three times the cost of sea freight. So right. that's where you see that, um, that big difference, right? Now, Absolutely. sea freight, usually a lot of people think you can get the shipment um, for sea shipping from China to the US in 14 days, 16 days, which is not true. Um, you have to calculate the unloading, the unloading times in the U.S. You know, these vessels carry over 20,000 containers at once. So right. you have to give the port workers time to offload all of those um, those containers, right? Absolutely. So I would say for sea shipping, the all-in transit time from, let's say, Shanghai port to, to Long Beach port, it's about 30 days or so if there is no U.S. customs delays or any weather delays. So, Absolutely. of course... Um, sea versus air, the major difference, well, difference is, is the transit Absolutely. and air uh, cost, right? Absolutely. So yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. So now let's let's transition into the tariffs, uh, the trade war on China. Um, you know, I kind of want to know a little bit more about that. So everyone is freaking out about that, right? And it's been going on for yeah. some time. Everyone is like, oh, my God, you know, what am I going to do? You know, my prices are going to, you know, I need to increase my prices and things like that. So 
why don't you tell us what do you guys know um, about the trade war? Um, has it increased tariffs? Um, you know, has it impacted the 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 cost of shipping? Um, is it going to increase more? Has it stopped? Kind of, you know, like what do you know about it? If you can discuss a little bit more about that. Okay, so I mean, this started what 2018, I would say. It right. started with steel products, and then started started going in with uh, more general commodities. Right. So, to, just to, you know, a general idea, there are three lists. So these, it was all steel products, and those were affected first. And anything that's like raw steel, right, or aluminum, they have a twenty five percent tax duty. So I don't know the 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 base rate for aluminum on top of my head but let's say for example um steel is five percent original duty so with this additional right. um uh, uh tariff rate 25 so it'll be a total of 30 percent right. okay so okay so, so on steel it's 25 percent on top of whatever else um, they used to be charged correct and this applies for okay. all three rounds so if you are, if your code or your HTS code is part of any of the three rounds that I'm that I said, one, two, or three, it's twenty five percent plus the original. Does that okay. make sense? And then can you go back to the three rounds because you were kind of cutting out there? I don't think I got it. So you were saying something about the three rounds? Yeah. So there's three rounds, right? Um, okay. I can go ahead and give you a, a document so you can link it down below, okay. and it'll list all the HTS codes that are affected um, okay. within, for the three rounds, right? Okay. So just to um, if your HS code is on this list that I'm going to send you, okay, it's going to be subject to 25% plus okay. the original duty. The original. Let's say, for example, backpacks, right? right. So most backpacks, I want to say most are all backpacks coming from China. The original duty is 17.6%. Right. And it's on the third list of the effective tariffs. So okay. that's going to be 17.6 plus 25%. Wow. Which is like 42 42.6% if I'm not right. wrong. Right. That's what you're going to be paying in duties, um, you know, based off your invoice value. So, I mean, that's, that's a, I guess, the gist of the trade war or what's being affected. Right. Um, I know that in, I think, early June, uh, our President Trump tweeted that he was going to add an extra $300 billion worth of, of, uh, of trade, right, to the, to the list. However, I think Two weeks ago, they had the meeting in, in Japan. So that's right. not going to go through. <clears throat> um, so if you thought or think that your product was going to be affected, don't worry, it's not. As long as it's not, it was on the fourth list, you should be, you should be clear. Okay. But um, I mean, I know recently I heard that steel for Vietnam is going to be imposed with 400% uh, additional duty. So that's really, really bad. But wow. if you're not importing duty, then you're, you're okay. Well, if you're not if you're not doing what again? I'm sorry. If you're not um, importing steel, then you should steel. be fine. Okay. Awesome. Very cool. Now, do you know why is it that steel has the highest, um, you know, the highest uh, tax rate or tariff rate? Is there like any specific reason? I mean, wh what is it exactly? I would say more because if it's a raw, it's, it's more of a raw material. So, right. you know, steel is used for a lot of things. Right. right. It's produced a lot of things here in the U.S. Right. So I would say one of the main reasons why it's being attacked so much. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. You know, and I'm 100 uh, percent well, with you on that. Now, the the a lot do a lot of your the people that you guys work with, um, have they been impacted by by these uh, by these increases, by these uh, tax increases at all? Or do you guys have a lot of clients that have been impacted? Yes, I would say a lot of items on round three, they're more, you know, everyday products, right? right. And what do Amazon sellers, what do they sell? Everyday products. Everyday products, people, right. People, um, like I said, backpacks, right? Right. Uh, families go out and buy backpacks for travel, for school, whatever the case is. So, right. um, yes, our customers are impacted by this by this trade war, um, okay. especially if they're on the round three, right? Okay. And how have I mean, how have they dealt with it? To be honest with you, the responses I've been getting is just, um, we have to deal with it until it's over. I mean, nothing's gonna last right. forever. At some point, it's gonna end, we hope. Um, and all they're doing is, increase. they're gonna have to increase their their, their price. Right. You know, who's gonna be paying for that? The consumer, which is, at the end, it's us. And right. that's how they're dealing with, with the trade war. It's just, 
we still have to eat, we still have to buy, we still have to um, find ways to, to get our, our items, right? Absolutely. So that of goods will not stop. So it's just a matter of um, of dealing it with dealing with it on the end um, on the end. Absolutely, and, and, and you know that's something that I tell a lot of people is that listen, if you are inside of a niche that got impacted heavily, you do need to understand that all of your competitors got impacted. So just because right. you have to raise your price, everyone else has to raise their price. It's not like right. you are the only person impacted and you have to raise your price and everyone is going to be the same. You know what I mean? Um, unless right. if you've got someone selling thousands of units and and they don't care. Maybe they're you know if if their you know if their margins get a little bit slimmer, they don't care. They're you know they're they're selling more. Um, so one thing you did mention. Um, do you think this is going to continue, or do you think this is a temporary thing that the tariffs are temporary and they might get taken off? Or is it more of a permanent thing? Um, well, right now it's just temporary. Okay. I, from what I heard, is that Trump and, of course, the president of China are still negotiating the right. um, effective tariffs. So Absolutely. luckily the fourth one didn't go through. So that was something positive that came out of that meeting, right? right. Now we're just waiting for, um, uh, for, for the final, I guess, decision. So right. I don't, me personally, I don't think it's going to last, you right. know, because it's a very heavy, just, heavy. Trump being crazy or something? Huh? I'm sorry. Might be just Trump being crazy. That's all. I guess just to to restructure the economy. I'm not sure, but right, we'll, right. See, we'll see what it brings. Yeah. Absolutely, definitely. And uh, you said you're going to share with us a uh, a list of the three different lists and when what kind of items um, are. Okay, awesome. That would be great. So that way we can share with everyone so they can see exactly what are some products being impacted so maybe if you are a beginner seller if you haven't started selling maybe you could even stay away like avoid products that are within those lists um you know if you are inside of that list i mean unfortunately yes. already right. you know the, uh, the 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 difference you know uh so that so that's incredible what else do you think big especially big and like i talk a lot about beginner sellers because if you're a seasoned seller if you've been selling for a while you've you know you have I guess you have resources to go around things. You have resources to, you know, to maneuver around things. Um, what is for beginner sellers? What are some things in your experience beginner sellers need to either know about, avoid, um, or just just pretty much have knowledge of? Uh, there's a lot of things to be honest. Okay, one, I mean, with this whole tariff war going on. Right. Don't rely. I would say don't always rely on the HS code that's provided by your supplier. I do get a lot of requests like this is the HS code that my supplier gave me. A lot of times, I mean, if you go on the HTS.gov website and you type in that code, it doesn't pull up because it doesn't exist. Right. So it can be because the, the code is outdated. So what I would recommend for new Amazon sellers, if you're looking for a certain product or let's say just multiple products, always reach out to a freight forwarder based in the U.S., um, specifically in the U.S., because they're the ones that are going to know what that HTS code will be and what the duty rate will be okay. and if it's impacted or if it's affected by the by the tariff war, right? So that's one Absolutely. thing. Don't always go based off what the supplier is giving you because it's not accurate. Uh, okay. Let's see. Okay, another thing. So when you're paying for duties, I, you know how your supplier gives you the performa invoice? you'll have, let's say we're purchasing cups. So you'll have paper cups and then you'll have the unit and then the unit value and the total. And then your supplier will add in the labor costs, packaging fees, et cetera, right? All those miscellaneous. So when you are paying for duties, I would recommend to remove those fees, like the um, labor costs, the labeling fees, uh, packaging fees, all of those items, remove them. So what you want to do is have two commercial and like, to um, perform the invoices, right? One for the business or the trade between you and your supplier, and the one that you're gonna use for customs um, declaration. So US Customs only cares about the importer paying for the for the duty on the actual product. They okay. don't care about what you're paying for labor, for uh, labeling, for packaging. They don't care about that. Okay. So it'll yeah. save you, a, you know, a couple of bucks as well. Um, okay. Because That's because the tariff are on the total invoice or on the total cost, right? Um, on the invoice, on the yeah, on the total invoice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Correct. So, so what that's you're another thing I would recommend. The product cost, like the actual product cost, only leave that on the invoice. 
just leave that correct okay. which is what you're paying to your manufacturer everything else leave it out it you don't want to be paying um duty on on an extra three hundred dollars four hundred dollars right you don't want to be paying for that. so Absolutely. that's another recommendation um another thing right so trade terms so most of the trade terms that we deal with are fob and exw right now X exw what do we do we are the buyer they pay they pay for the pickup from the supplier bring it all the way to destination right and all cost right. inclusive right. and then fob the supplier will deliver the freight to the port and then the buyer will take over from the port of china or whatever so port of all the way here. right so when you're negotiating with the supplier, they're offering you to, I mean, they can offer you a unit and EXW price per unit, correct? So yeah. what, I what I would recommend is depending on how much you're ordering, you should also get FOB and EXW shipping costs from your freight forwarder. Because sometimes, although EXW or FOB seems cheaper to buy from your supplier, right? it can be um, more costly or more, you know, or cheaper to ship. Does that make sense? So you want to compare those two costs. You want to compare your price per unit under right. export and FOB term right. and your shipping costs under those two terms. And Absolutely. that way you can see what, what's going to optimize your, your profit margin, right? Absolutely. And uh, I mean, we offer that. We, we were able to give our customers both prices for them to compare. Absolutely. And That's awesome. That's amazing. Now, one uh, one little, it might sound a stupid question, I don't know, what does HTC stand for? For a lot of people watching, they might not know what that means. What is what, sorry? What, what does HTC e stand for? HTC, uh, let me see, HTC, so, correct? Right, you were saying, you, you kept on saying HTC, HTC, you said if you go on this website, you will see that that number doesn't, uh, doesn't exist or whatever, or am I pronouncing oh, it correctly? Yeah. HTS, HTS. Harmonized, uh, tariff, or har harmonized tariff schedule. Um, okay. Harmonized schedule. Yeah, that's what it is, and it's pretty much a, a code, right? It can be a ten-digit, eight-digit code, and that okay. code it will classify your product in the government website. It's like a tariff code. Um, okay. It's like it can start with eight zero one eight. It's pretty much it starts with a different, um, what is it? Like a subheading. Right. And that, right. That your product and Absolutely. in the file that i'm going to send you it's going to have all of the codes that are affected by um by the trade war okay so, so I'm assuming that every product has a code that's going to identify it what kind of like whatever what kind of material it has or where it falls um in that list or whatnot correct exactly yes okay correct okay awesome very good now aside from you know aside from uh, um Hiring a fry forwarder or all the advantages you talked about hiring a fry forwarder that's US based. Um, what is the disadvantage of hiring? Okay, so well, actually, let, let me rephrase my question. So, you guys are not in China, correct? You guys are here. So, don't yeah. you think that a fry forwarder based in the US has a disadvantage over someone based in China where the actual manufacturer is and where the actual um, where the actual supplies are? Yes, well, that is a disadvantage, but freight forwarders, if you know if they're good and if they're they're well connected, we have three partners in China that we work with, right? And we okay. have them, um, Shenzhen, two in Shenzhen and one in Shanghai. So okay. these partners, they'll go ahead and connect directly with the supplier. And that's okay. how we, we make the coordination, right? And we don't lose time. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's one of the, um, to us, it's not really a disadvantage because we have those really good partners. Um, whereas if you're working with a Chinese supplier, who do they have in the U.S. to make the connections? Right. Absolutely. So I guess that's another another tip to look for. Make sure that the company you're working with, they have um, well-oriented, you know, well-centered partners across not even not even uh, not just China, but any country of origin, you know, Korea, Absolutely. Vietnam, um, anywhere, okay. anywhere you're shipping from. That's awesome. And then, does your company only ship to um, to the U.S. or can you guys also um, do like European markets, U.K., Germany? Yes, we can offer service from China or any port of origin to the U.K. and Canada, and okay. we can assist you, you know, to see what uh, importing requirements um, you need to to bring product into that country. So okay. those are the two that we're doing, and also 
if you guys have, let's say, overstock, right? If you guys bring something to um, to the U.S. and you guys just have overstock and you guys want to sell in Canada or in, in the U.K., right? We can also process that export for you guys. So okay. um, that's another service we offer as well. Bundling, right? Bundling uh, at our warehouse. We have removal orders. So if you just want to find a 3PL company <clears throat> and not pay the Amazon, you know, what you're paying your Amazon for storage. storage. Come on for storage fees. Absolutely. It, right. Bring it to our warehouse. Our storage fees are lowered. And that's what I guess the beauty of working with the 3PL is that sometimes they offer lower storage um, prices, right, for, for their Absolutely. customers. And you Absolutely. have to pay inventory fees. You know, I'm not too familiar with the Amazon cost inside the inside their warehouse. Right. Uh, all we all we charge is really the pallet fees, um, storage fees. If of course, if you use LTL shipping, um, but that's pretty much it. There's no okay. inventory fees or anything like that. Absolutely. So so not only are you guys freight forwarders, but you guys also offer a space for someone to actually store their exactly. products. Should they, you know, have more inventory than needed and and should the inventory go over stock or their stock i mean go over the the term of the whatever i think it's like six months um or whatever that's allowed and then you start getting charged these like ridiculous you know fees of of having yeah. your your products uh in the amazon warehouse so i mean that's incredible you know it's kind of like a like a one-stop shop you know so yeah, now if correct. anyone is interested in hiring you guys for their forwarding more about the company kind of more of the services that you guys offer uh, where should they really go you can go on our website worldcraftlogistics.com we have an option for you to request a rate or you can email me directly i'll go ahead and give you my my information so you can leave it okay. um and then you guys can contact me i'm up for a call i mean i can also give you my whatsapp my skype i'm available to answer any Absolutely. questions that you guys may have so that's you know that's what i'm here for right and That's just incredible. to educate, because I think the shipping, the freight forwarding um, part of the Amazon process and adventure is just, it's very, I want to say hidden, right? And it's very hard right. to to, right. to find, right? Absolutely, so yeah, definitely. that's what I'm here for. And let's That's incredible. See. Yeah. But That's anyway. awesome. So, um, so anyone watching right now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pin a comment in the comment section. Uh, with the Stephanie's uh, uh, information we'll have. So she is tagged in this post, so you can just go add her and send her a direct message. I'll also have the company's uh, website where you guys, as she said, you guys can get a direct quote and we'll also have her um, email address. So you guys can email her directly. That way, you know, you guys can get in touch with her and then see, you know, how she get, you know, she can help you. And as she said earlier, even if you are working with a supplier that's already providing you with, information already giving you guys information to or price to ship your um product directly to amazon check with them you know they might be able to beat it you know especially if you're just starting out you know you only have a couple thousand dollars you know a couple hundred bucks here and there could could go a very you know very long way uh, then they can you know save you on on shipping costs i mean you know a couple hundred dollars on a couple hundred units uh uh, uh could could be about a, you know 50 cents to a dollar which really could, you know, could could be a big thing when you're selling a few hundred units per month, you know. So so definitely check that out. Uh, be sure to uh, let her know. As you guys know, every Monday and Friday, I you know I bring an entrepreneur with a product or a service or simply just a uh, an inspirational message uh, to to provide content, provide value to you guys, really help impact you guys' lives as it is part of the mission, my mission in 2019 to impacting the lives of 2,500 people. Um, and Stephanie's been an honor having you here. It's really been great. I know I personally have gained a ton of information and a ton of value. Uh, anyone watching this interview will also be on YouTube in the next couple of days. So you guys can either, you know, come back and watch it here or go on my YouTube channel. I'll also have a link in the pinned comment below. But uh, Stephanie, really appreciate you. Um, anyone watching, if you guys need help, be sure to reach out to her. She's, I mean, she's more than happy to help and more than happy to take all of your questions. Um, I'll see you guys in the next um, episode. We appreciate you guys all watching. Stephanie, thank you very much. You guys have a thank great you. day and um, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.